If you haven't heard of fanfare signatures yet or know very little about them, you'll be hearing a lot more soon. A product of the 2020 pandemic lockdown, they provide digitally signed artwork for fans of a number of franchises, especially Star Trek. That's hardly surprising since the founder of the company is one Owen Delancey, son of John Delancey, who breathed life into that omnipotent agent of chaos Q. I sat down with Owen to talk about fanfare signatures and his personal connection to Star Trek. I'm T. Rick Jones, and this is your Daily Star Trek News. Uh, give me the origin story. How did? Yeah, the origin story <laughs> is that. Um, so basically, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe I'm I'm telling too much. I I I run my dad's. Uh, I'm my dad's tech guy. I'm as as most millennial kids, they they become their parents' tech uh, IT person, right? I know it he, well. So I I help run. I was helping to run his his keep his kind of website going and whatnot. Um, and when the p- pandemic really went into full effect and everything started to shut down all of you know all the conventions shut down and everything um he started getting a flood of requests uh you know fans being like oh i really was hoping to be at that convention and i wanted to get something from you and i wanted you to sign something and of course during especially during the pandemic it was just you know people were like can we send stuff in and it, but i was like I, I can't even go to the post office i don't even think it's open like this isn't gonna work yeah so i was constantly having to write back to people saying i'm so sorry you know he'll will definitely you know hopefully things will get better soon and whatnot and amongst all that, we came up. Uh, so my my partner and I run a business that uh, does uh, art, design, and production. So we've been doing that for about ten years. So we have a system that's all completely on demand, um, and uh, we have like thirty different print houses around the world that we've set up. And we've been doing artwork production for you know everything from e-commerce brands to you know working with hotel chains and government agencies. You know if you go. If you go to like the parks in some in some of Canada or in the U.S., you'll see the maps before you start on a trailhead. Yeah. Some of those maps are ours, right? And we we would design and then print those out. And so that was our business. Um, we both were architecture trained uh, students and stuff, so we use a lot of our our know how from our architecture days to to do that work. Um, and in amongst writing back all those emails to those fans, I started going, you know, maybe there is a way to do this. Um, because on, on our side internally, we use a lot of graphic um, hardware, uh, specifically and especially like the iPad and the Apple Pencil, things like that, right? Where you can use t- t- drawing tablets to do our illustration work and whatnot. That are the technology for has gotten incredible. I mean, it's it's almost it is exactly your handwriting, exactly your uh, your you know drawing style and everything. I said, you know, Dad, I think there might be a way that we can still do this for your fans. And he said, oh, well, okay, let's let's talk about it. So what we concepted out was essentially what we have today, which is fanfare, but a very simple version. And it was just for my dad at the time. And so we put up a quick little website for him, uh, made a quick little you know piece of art that could work. Uh, and we set, and we set him up with our, our tablet systems. Uh, and I said, look, I'm gonna start taking orders and I'll send them to you and we'll just see how it goes. And fans loved him uh they people were really enthusiastic about it uh it quickly started to snowball um and from there uh my dad started talking to other of course friends that they see all the time you know bob uh picardo and armin sherman and stuff and you know they'd be at each other's houses for dinner and my dad's maybe even pulling the tablet oh i gotta do a few of these really quick uh and they'd be like oh what's this and so they'd crowd around and watch and and be like that's cool and so that's how it it grew and from there we said okay this is let's take this more seriously and uh we said let's let's go and actually pitch this to uh CBS at the time um and uh they loved it and they said that's cool um they and so we said we'd really like to do some artwork that's star trek you know and so this is what we're coming to you about and they said, go, go for it. They love the artwork we've done in, for other things and stuff. They said, go for it. So we, we decided to do that. And we decided, you know, I grew up in, 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 you know, the convention circuit going around and seeing all that stuff. Um, and there are some cool standout pieces, but you know, you get a lot of kind of the same floating heads, space background, that kind of stuff. And for us, I said, you know, I would also really like to make it something that is different. Uh, I'd like to do a completely different take on the sort of Star Trek fan art. 
And so that's what we did. And we went with this sort of kind of like gr highly graphic poster, kind of something you'd see almost vintage, like WPA, like the old, like, you know, public service announcement posters, World War II uh, posters, that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's, that's what we did. And we started, uh, my dad reached out to more of the uh, colleagues, more of the cast. And they all started signing on and it just kind of snowballed. Um, uh, and from there, we've been, you know, since then, it's been about a year and a half, I'd say. And since then, we've we've started to take on other franchises, uh, making partnerships with other people. Obviously, this became, you know, at one point, my partner, I said, I think this is the business now. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, then we made our, our most recent one, which we're very excited to launch uh, this season, which is for uh, with the NFL, our partnership there. I know. Completely divergent from Star Trek, but uh, you know, hey, football fans everywhere. You know, uh, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of the cast members that love. You know, I we, my dad goes to Bill Shatner's house every once in a while for Monday Night Football. So, um, so there's a lot of different areas we're we're starting to move into, and uh, it's very exciting. We're very, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, I I hope the stars are aligning. Uh, I think that they might be. Um, it seems a little bit like this just plopped in our lap, you know? Um, and uh, I guess we just decided like, hey, let's take this opportunity. Um, and it's working out. But, you know, I'm I'm very grateful always to the fans that we have had to date who are seeing what we're doing and are appreciating it. I mean, some of the reactions we get are just amazing. When you look at some of the stuff that comes in from reviews, um, you know, people are getting real personal meaningful messages from Armin or from Kate Mulgrew or from whoever yeah. uh, at a time maybe that's you know they're going through something rough especially during the pandemic there's a lot of people who are having a hard time and I think people were really enjoying having that real direct connection right yeah. um, and so that was really fun to see and that kind of continued to drive us and say okay let's let's keep how do we make this even better how do we make this something that is very authentic where people really get the sense like, oh, wow, I'm really kind of almost communicating with, you know, so-and-so, <laughs> Q. I've looked at a lot of the artwork and it is, it's stunning. It's really, really cool. I love oh, thank you. sort of, sort of a uh, retro feel of it. Who, who does, is it digital that you do the artwork or is it hand-drawn? Yeah. Uh, well, again, it uses the same, the same uh, technology that, that the, that all of our actors are using to sign, right? Um, you know, you'll actually see, uh, sometimes, uh, Armin always loves to add a little, uh, a little face. He loves to draw. So like some of his stuff where he, you'll see, I'll see some of them come in and he'll, he'll do his signature. He'll write the message to, to the fan and then he'll do a little, a little, you know, face of cork at the bottom or something. So it's, it's the same tool, right? And the app that we created, the tech, the, the, the you know, the fanfare app that we created is using the same thing, right? It has all, all the same features that we would use for illustration. Uh, in terms of who's doing it, uh, right now, you know, we we do have a team of illustrators that help me now because we are starting to, it's becoming a, a real load. But I, honestly, it was me. <laughs> to some extent, uh, you know, I was the creative director pushing a lot of those ideas. Um, but now we have a, now we have a team, right? We have a team of people. They're very skilled uh, illustrators. We like to, we like to hire, we like to still employ artists. <laughs> As artists and designers ourselves, we're very much into that. And so, we're constantly finding artists uh, who, you know, if we see a cool piece of fan art, and uh, we always say, people, if, if you got something, send it to Fanfare. Uh, you can be put on the list of, you know, things. If we have that actor and you have some cool fan art you want to, we can incorporate that in, right? So we're always looking to support sort of the fan artist uh, community. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as, as I said, as artists ourselves, we we really appreciate that, so. Now you have a short list of, of names so far um, in the Trek community. You've got Armin, you've got Bob. Uh, tell us who else who else is so, forward. Just launching uh, this week is uh, George Decay, which we're very oh, excited yeah. about. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't, there's, not, there's some people I can't really uh, talk about yet, but uh, I could say Brent uh, Spiner is going to be joining here very soon. Um, we launched recently Jonathan Frakes. Um, so that's an exciting one. And, you know, we're in talks with some other people. We're also in talks now um, with Paramount, who's now the, you know, Star, uh, Star Trek owner. Um, there are obviously a lot of new Star Trek iterations coming out. And so we're working on that. Uh, and so there'll be news coming soon about that. And there's also going to be an, ex you know, we're, we're moving outside of Star Trek. So, you know, I'm sure Star Trek fans have other interests in other places, but, you know, 
from Doctor Who to, to you know, the office to you, you name it, right? I mean, there's all sorts of places we're going. Yeah. And I think that's the exciting part is that there's, there's kind of the, the amount of different places that we could go with this is, is, quite, is quite large. Um, uh, there, there, it's, it's fun to, to think about like, wow, there are so many, you know, you, I haven't met anybody yet who has said, you know, I'm not in, you know, everybody's got somebody that they would be like, oh, I'd get that one. For me, it was for me personally. Uh, it was Bill Nye. Growing up as a as a '90s kid, uh, when when Bill, you know, was like, "Yeah, this sounds great. Let me uh, let me sign." I was like, "Oh my god, that one for me." I was like, "That's cool." Bill is an early adopter. Really appreciate that. Um, he's he's been great. Honestly, he's he's such a great guy. And you know, for him, I think you know he's not he, he's not somebody who's I think typically doing a lot of those signature things. And so this this made it both easy, but also something that. Um, was really a fan connection, right, um, yeah. for him, which I think, you know, a lot of the times, um, you know, a lot of these memorabilia uh, houses or online sites, they they tend to cater a lot to resellers and collectors, which sure. which is its own industry. And we always say that's not really the industry we're into. We're, we're, we're much more about personalized fan, you know, actor connection, right, fan celebrity connection. So what is it that's so important about that? Why is it important for the fans? You know, as you said, during the pandemic, the fans were cut off from yeah. the celebrities. So why is it important to to foster a connection between the fans and ce the celebrities? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. I mean, this is, this is, this is getting going to get pretty philosophical here. Uh, you know, what is it about society that makes it important that we you know, we all collectively have these people in that we feel like are in our lives. You know, they're in our living rooms on a sometimes daily basis. Well, now streaming, definitely daily basis. Um, you know, I think it's I, I, it's about share. To me, what I see coming through in the, in terms of the requests, it's about sharing. You know, one of the things I think uh, just on a business e-commerce level that really took us back because we've been doing this for ten years was the rate at which we were getting review requests fulfilled. In typical e-commerce, it, you know, a, a few percentage as like the return rate on a review request in just regular e-commerce is pretty industry standard. And we were getting a lot more than what we were used to seeing. And when we were looking at the reviews, what we were noticing is it was almost just a continuation. You know, when you go and you order on Fanfare from somebody, not only can you make the request, but you can also add notes, right? context right oh this is this is to celebrate a, a specific moment in my life that just happened or something like that and so what we would see is people are wanting to engage in that way the same way that when you go to a convention you get to engage in that way you know my dad will talk with somebody oh what do you do for a living oh what you know what are you doing here all that kind of stuff this is a way to do that another way to do that digitally on demand without having to you know fly to cincinnati or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. i think I think it's important because it's important for a lot of us, most, many of us, as I said, I don't think there's a person anywhere who doesn't have somebody, right? Everybody's got somebody um, and that you would be like, okay, well, that person I'd have at dinner for sure. Like I'd definitely be like fanboying over that person sitting at my dinner table. So I think that in that sense, we all collectively as a society, you know, yes, we prop up celebrity, um, you know, for better or for worse. But I think a lot of it comes down to just wanting to have that kind of connection, feeling like sharing that with the person who you see on your television every day in your living room. Uh, it's important to people, you know, and it, and it brings it brings a level of meaningfulness. And, you know, with us, I'm sure that the, the many people have uh, and rightfully so make the connection between Cameo and what we're doing. Um, and I think for us, one of the key differences is that ultimately what you're going to get is something that can live permanently on your wall. So, you know, when you're, if you're placing an order, you know, you might want to think what is something inspirational? And my dad gets that a lot too, where people are like, oh, you know, I would love, you know, the trial never ends, right? Is a great one, which he gets constantly, but it makes sense, right? You know, you put that up uh, above your desk in your office and every time you're going, Oh, why am I doing this? You look up and you go, that's right. That's right. You're right. That's right. You know, <laughs> thank you, Q. Uh, so I think that, you know, those are the reasons that people are engaging with this. Um, you know, every, I have motivational stuff up, right? Like I've got, I've got things like that up that I look at and I go, right, right. It kind of rewrites the ship, keeps you on track, 
So I don't know if you have time, but if you're really yeah. there, there's a very interesting uh, concept in anthropology about human society in terms of our ability as an animal species outside of most other animals. There's very few that can actually do this. So if you think about the size of a group, right? You think about a wolf pack, you know, a wolf pack is able to kind of, you know, have the alpha all the way down to the, the one that's kind of ostracized, but with it, you can't, you don't have wolves who are going, oh, you know that wolf pack down the way in the other forest? Boy, they got this guy over there who's such a jerk. Uh, you know, his name is Fido. Don't interact with him. They don't do that, right? Somehow along the way in our evolution, we started to gain the ability to not just have the people that we would meet directly, you know, that I only know somebody based on if I met them directly. Not necessarily, right? You, we as humans can take, you know, sometimes incorrectly and sometimes correctly, we can take from other people their experiences, right? And so we start to collectively know, <laughs> you know, like uh, you probably know Brad Pitt in some ways better than you know a guy who might live a block away from you that you've never met, right? And isn't that interesting? Isn't that a strange thing for our species to have come up with? Uh, but that might be also part of the sort of foundations as to why we might be so uh, into celebrity and why why we like to be connected in that way with people who, you know, have you actually met them? Well, through your television, sure. But like, it still feels like you know them, right? And I think that's a uniquely human thing. Did you ever visit the set of Star Trek The Next Generation? Oh, yeah. Now, I would have been pretty young. You know, I'm still, sure. uh, I'm, I'm only 36. So, I, I you know, I would have been... There are pictures, though, uh, you know, me sitting in the captain's chair as a little little boy in my Oshkosh, whatever. Uh, you know, I think the only thing I really remember uh, vividly were the um, all the model model making stuff um, that was to me and may might have actually been why I went into architecture to some degree. Uh, the model making, and you know, it's kind of sad. You know, obviously, movies nowadays, incredible special effects. The stuff they do is insane. Yeah. But there's something about a lost art there that makes me kind of sad because some of that model making stuff was just so cool. And as a little kid, looking at some of these, you know, you'd walk into this room with these the, the star field, right? They'd have these like, I think it was like felt, these big, you know, like what's behind you there, the the sort of like felt, and they'd poke all these holes into it, and they put the. So when you'd walk in, it already had this feel about it. It was like, oh, I'm like floating in space, and then you'd have, you know. Um, and, and some of them were big. I mean, they, these aren't like little models. These were, some of them were large, large of like the enterprise. You know, you got to get the scale right. You know, there's some things that don't scale. You know, light doesn't scale. Liquids don't scale. And plasma, like fire doesn't scale, right? And you've, everybody's seen it in old movies where it's like an old pirate ship, but it's like the waves crashing over. You're like, that was a huge drop of water that just landed on the deck. Like, I don't <laughs> think that worked. <laughs> um, but you know, it was, that was fun. I do very much remember that. And as I said, it, uh, you know, thinking back on it, it's maybe why I was so interested in architecture. And it was the thing while I was doing architecture that really fascinated me was I was always gravitating towards doing, um, you know, if, if, if the project in class was to, to do, you know, something, I was always going model making, <laughs> model making first for me. Uh, you know, I did a lot of sculpture in university as well alongside, and I think, you know, working with my hands like that and working in 3D in the real world was something that, and, and who knows, that might've been born out of just spending a lot of time watching those model makers on set, you know, for uh, for TNG or or for Voyager. You know, my brother was in Voyager, so he he did that. I think I did, what was it I did? I, I did the world tour uh, premiere, whatever. I forget what it was called, but- um, Star Trek World I, did, I, I was gonna ask you about yes. that. <laughs> okay, you were, yeah. Yeah, I, that I do remember because I was a little bit older, of course. Yeah. I played the younger Q, uh, two or R, whatever you, whatever name I had. Uh, uh, my brother played the older me. I don't know that we actually looked that similar, but in any case, movie magic. Um, yeah, no, that was fun because we got to, you know, I got to go with my dad flying around. We went to the big, I think the big opener was in Bonn in Germany. Uh, and uh, I'll never forget flying first class. They put us on first class British Airways, which was the first one to have the, the lie down seats. Uh, oh, and yeah. I think I might have been the first child they had in first class. <laughs> so I remember on the way back, uh, and of course, this is pre 9 11, 
um, they came down and they said, uh, uh, would you like to come and sit in the cockpit while we land in LAX? And I was like, oh my God, uh, amazing, right? Uh, so uh, that was an experience I'll never forget for sure. Yeah. Especially because you're sitting there and all these things are going off as you get closer to the runway. It's like, warning, warning, warning. And they're just like ignoring it. And you're like, uh, do we need to be concerned about that? <laughs> <laughs> How much do you remember about that world tour? Because I knew nothing about it. I When I was researching you, I saw about it. What was the story? What was the kind? It was like a museum, oh, right? You're going to, you're, you're going to, I, I don't know if I'm going to get the story right. You know, I can I can give you parts. You know, I I, I was just like my brother uh, character in Voyager. I think, you know, I was mischievous uh, with too much power. A mischievous kid with too much power, of course, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, smashing matter and antimatter together. I remember very much doing that. Um, you know, I, I I remember the tour. I'm not, not sure I remember all of the pieces. You know, you're kind of in in a lot of those settings. You're kind of shuffled around, right? So you're not. It, you know, you're not always getting the same experience that the attendees are getting, right? And I think a lot of that world tour was kind of almost an experiential thing, right? And yeah. we weren't getting a whole ton of that. They they did give us, they, we had a, a driver or I don't know, I won't say bodyguard. I don't think we needed a bodyguard, but uh, a, a, this German guy who was really nice and he, and he bought me a huge bag of German chocolate. So the whole time, I mean, I was still pretty young. I, I, I was still quite a, quite a young boy. And so- sure. You know, no matter where we were going, I think I do remember always getting to the next place we had to wait and being like, does somebody have that bag of chocolate? Where'd that bag of chocolate go? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of, that was kind of my memory of it. Just to wrap up a little bit, um, how how, uh, how can people order um, order pictures, uh, order sign, sign photos or sign yeah. art? So you? you just go to, you go to fanfaresignatures.com. Yeah. Um, and uh, you'll see that there's a whole slew of different Star Trek, uh, you know, characters there and actors there. Um, and each one of them has their own page. They're, so it's a dedicated page. So you go to Jonathan Frakes' page and it'll be a dedicated page. You can see him up there. He's You can see him in video saying, hey, this is me really doing this. Um, and uh, you, there's, you know, depending on, on uh, usually we have a few options in terms of art. We like to, we like to kind of constantly be, making up new stuff in terms of artwork um you know i think it's it's both fun the fans enjoy it and it's a reason to keep coming back and checking it out um so so definitely you know if, if you're if you see stuff you like keep keep checking in because we're always you know coming out with new pieces of art um and it's pretty simple you know the the order form you basically you know who it's for the context um you can give you know is it a birthday gift a lot of time a lot of uh, orders are for, you know, oh, I know somebody who would love this and it's their birthday or Christmas or they just graduated or whatever, right? Um, so uh, you can put all that information in. You can add the notes if you want to add a special note that the actor will see. So on the Fanfare app, when they're signing, they're actually seeing, like they'll they'll sit down and they'll see you, your name, what your, you know, your request and your note, you know? So write to them, you know, say whatever you want. Um, you know, obviously keep it, uh, keep it kosher. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it, they are really seeing this and they are really signing this um, by hand. Uh, and, and I do want to stress that because I know what we're doing here is, uh, a, a, you know, it's 21st century. It's a little, it's a little bit of a modern take on the traditional world of auto, autograph memorabilia. But, you know, uh, one thing that's incredibly important to us is, the reason we did this was we wanted to facilitate both fans who are not typically able to travel uh, to the conventions. Maybe they live just too far away or there's some other reason they're not able to travel. Um, we wanted to give them the opportunity the same way that people who could do travel to the conventions uh, to, to have that. Um, it also makes it incredibly easy for, for the actors to be able to have that connection on a just 24 kind of hour basis. Um, they can just constantly have that connection. Um, but, you know, for us, that that's the reason for it. And so the authenticity of it is paramount to us. Um, we 100% guarantee, you know, when you order a thing from Armin Sherman, he is signing it. You know, he is looking at your order on our app and saying, oh, it's, you know, it's Rick. Oh, hey, great. Oh, and it's Rick's fiftieth uh, birthday. Uh, whatever you know, and then yeah. he he can he can do that. So and he's doing each one of them are sitting down to do that every time personally. So 
I just wanted to stress that part because I know it can be confusing. We're kind of inventing a new space here. We're inventing a new technology. And that always comes with a little bit of, of learning and, and some skepticism, which is which is understandable. But, uh, you know, that's our job. Uh, and that's what we're working on to make sure people really understand, like, nope, this is the real McCoy. To... <laughs> so you can do framed and unframed. And uh, I will say, you know, the framed print, um, I, you know, it, it's definitely, I, I, we like to stay a, a bit competitive. We don't want to, you know, we haven't, you know, raised prices with the inflation. We haven't, you know, bought onto that bandwagon. Um, it's a very, we really, st I stand by our framed prints uh, very much. Um, we, we are going, because of the kind of, you know, for a fan, this is a real piece that is something that's going to be a memento, uh, hopefully for a long time, that they'll own for a long time. And so for us, it was very important that we do something that was of a premium quality that could last. So to that end, acid-free papers, you know, uh, high GSM, uh, cotton blend, um, something that would not fade over time. That was uh, incredibly important. Then when you get into the frame, all wood, actual wooden frame, with an optical glass that has a UV protection. So again, protecting that print from getting sun damaged or UV damaged. Um, and then on the back, we've got uh, dust covers, again, to keep any dust from infiltrating in and also damaging. These are things that like, as a collector, somebody would know about this stuff. Um, and then the last little piece that we think is, uh, really makes the piece just that much better than what you would normally buy as a framed anything, or you go to Ikea and get a frame or anything, is we have a, a custom mat cut. So it's a museum grade mat, you know, with the beveled edge cut, and then that's matted so that it's it's secure inside. Um, and it, I have to say, you know, with the uh, hardware already installed on the back, you just pull it out of the box, it's ready to hang. Um, it's, a, I have to say, and people do write into us and go, I was not expecting it to be this level of quality. And we really do stand, stand by that. You know, we've had some people, uh, some suppliers in the past to try to get us to buy some other type of frame and we go, okay, send us a sample. And then we've had, we, we've got closets full of samples where we go, nope. I just, I take one look, I go, nope. Um, you know, we have a few suppliers that we really trust. We've been working with them for years. And, um, you know, we know that the quality is incredibly high. Um, and that's, I think that's what's needed, right? For, for these types of pieces. These are something that for somebody, you know, especially if they're, a lot of people are buying them for, for kids. They're like, I want my kid to have this and to grow into having this as an adult. Sure. So, yeah. Well, Owen Delancey, thank you so much for joining me on Daily Star Trek. Absolutely. Um, this has been a delight. It's been fantastic to meet you and talk with you. Uh, you too. If you'd like to order digitally signed art from Fanfare Signatures for yourself or as a gift, follow the link in the show notes. And if you want to ensure we continue to make content like this, why not support us on Patreon? Your donation not only helps us afford the hosting fees for our website and podcast, but also helps us to pay our writers. Even a donation of as little as a dollar a month keeps us running. Head over to www.patreon.com slash daily Star Trek news to help us out.